One of the issues with tables is that we always want them to stay nice and neat as one block. However, because they're part of the text, they're not always going to fit nicely in the available space. So sometimes they will go between pages. If you have a large table, it is absolutely fine for your table to go over multiple pages like in this case. But what will help is if you set up the header row, which explains what is in every column, to appear on every page of the document. When someone is reading the second page of this document, they can actually see what is in each column. You can do that by selecting the entire header row, and then from the Table Tools Layout tab, you choose to repeat the header row. That way, the computer will automatically create the same header row on every subsequent page if your table ends up on more than one page. So you don't need to worry if your table is long, it will be still perfectly readable. If your table is wide, that is a much bigger issue because in that case, you're limited by the width of the page. So the first thing you can do is reduce the width of every column to the minimum possible so it's still readable, so you don't break up any words. However, if this is not enough and you've already chosen a slightly smaller font size, it is better to create a separate landscape page and put your table in there so it will be nice and easy to read rather than trying to cram it or also never good idea to go into the margin of the page. So try always to keep your tables within your text, but if they are too wide, it is better to have a landscape page with the table nicely displayed there. It's much easier to read. And now I'll show you how you can create a landscape page in your document. First of all, you need to go to the end of your current document where it still needs to remain in portrait orientation. So in my case, this is just after the text here. I want this document at this point to stop being portrait and to turn to landscape. You can achieve that by creating sections within your document. And the sections can look different, can be formatted differently. So at the end of the text, I want to break this document into another section. I can do that from the Layout tab, choose Breaks, and choose a section break that starts on the next page. So I'm creating a new section on a new page. And there is my table now on a new page. After the table, I'm just going to create an empty line. Obviously, that's normal. After the table, I want the rest of the document to go back to portrait. So I don't want the entire second half of the document to be landscape. I just want the part where the table sits. So I need to create another break because I'm going to create another section. So from the layout tab, choose breaks and another section break that starts on the next page. And that way, I have this part of the document, which should remain portrait oriented. This part of the document with the table sets, which I want landscape and the rest of the document, which should remain portrait. If you end up with extra empty lines, just delete them and make sure it's nice and tidy. So now you can go to the page where the table is and choose that page, which is in a separate section of the document to be landscape. From the layout tab, choose orientation and change to landscape. Obviously my table is not necessarily wide enough to use the space, but you can see how a bigger table will fit nicely in here. Again, make sure you don't have any extra spaces around it. So you can see how the first half of the document is portrait, and then we have a separate section that is landscape, and then it continues again to portrait. So this is a much better way to accommodate white tables within your text rather than trying to cram them to fit in a portrait page.